Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back of his time. Joined today with Spider Man, or Theo, as I like to call him. And what Spider Man is missing here is something that every Spider Man needs, and that's webs to fire. Doesn't Spider Man need webs? He does, he does need webs. So we're going to use the 3D printing pren, printing pren, the 3D printing pen, that's a bit of a tongue twister, to make some Spider-Man webs today. So let's go to the spider cave. Oh, is it spider cave, spider lair? Mm, which is it? <laughs> you don't know. Spider house. The spider house, off we go. And down there is our office spider, by the way. I'm just going to show you real quick while we got the camera. You see his little leggy? Yay, this is where he lives. This is the office spider. He's not going to come out. My Spider-Man seems to have disappeared. He's not so interested in the process of the webs as you know, as far as just having the webs. So uh, that's fine. We'll have a little bit of peace and quiet. We'll do it. Uh, I thought I'd just sort of talk two seconds, literally two seconds about the 3D printing. We've had the pen. You might have seen a previous video on it. Um, it works really well. What we do is we sort of start off with really kind of crude things and then we've sort of upgraded to making more and more intricate shapes. This started as a sort of wireframe car but every day a little piece has been added and it's got really thick. It's really super robust now so you can actually make some sort of really quite good things out of this and once they're done they the kids play with these. These are these are tough. Um, and you might have seen the previous video on some spinners and stuff you know you can just make these functional things. So Spider-Man web though is going to be really I think it's going to be one of the easiest things. I'm thinking in my head something a bit like a ninja star. So I've got some white filament from my uh, 3D printer. We're just going to use that because we have loads of that. I'm not sure if it's AVS or PLA actually, so that should be interesting. I'm hoping it's PLA, but the pen actually does have a temperature setting that lets you adjust it for both. I don't remember the intricacies of the sort of difference really. If ABS needed more or less temperature, one or the other. I'm going to help it though, it doesn't seem to be feeding through. There you go, it's starting now. So I'm just going to wind it out to get rid of all of the old gold filament because clearly Spider-Man's webs have to be out. White. It's a bit hot. Let's leave it there for two seconds just to firm up. Just sort of smelling it, see if I can smell if it's ABS or PLA. Not sure. So I'm thinking of a design that's somewhat like, imagine a sort of ninja throwing star. Something along the lines of that. And I kind of think if I do a shape all leading to a central point and then just sort of repeat that same pattern, that's actually already quite webby, to be honest with you. Ah, let's see if it's feasible even to trace out something like that on a bit of board. Bloody hot, get off. But it's not like a glue gun though, where a glue gun sort of really burns the hell out of you. I guess it's because it's not sticky, it doesn't stick to you. But yeah, be careful if you've got one anyway. Don't don't just do what I do. So there's a bit of a, a yellowy white there, but it started. Some uh, filaments you'll find will stick really well and others just won't. There's something weird about filaments and what, what they're made of. And I think it's to do with the pigments. So some, some sort of have different color pigments in there and some will be the natural colour. Ah, oh, I screwed that up. I like the natural colour of the plastic. So you might find, oh, look at that. Maybe something like a white, you're actually just seeing the colour plastic. Whereas maybe if you're seeing a gold, you're seeing a white plus something else. And that plus something else bit is the bit that's going to react weirdly. So I'm just going to stop the pen once I get to the edge so it, I don't continue to make a massive mistake. So when you're doing this, and it's the same for any of these sort of 3D pen projects. And your 3D printer, if you're using a 3D printer, is doing the same. You're kind of laying down a base that has to sort of adhere reasonably well because everything else is just going to stick off that. Um, and then once you've got that good, you can just keep layering it pretty aggressively. So you can see I'm just not, I'm not taking massive amounts of care because I just, I'm just trying to get the uh, general sort of skeleton done. And frankly, how much care do you need to take for something your kids are going to chuck around for 20 minutes and then get bored? If you're doing this for your sort of cosplay or jewellery, yeah, you, you, I think you're going to 
set your uh, pen to the much slower speed. Oh, I forgot a rib here. I think that's looking quite spider webbish. So that's your first bit. Now we know that that's not going to be any good for anything because it's going to break as soon as I peel it off. So literally just a case of going over. And what I've discovered through making other bits and pieces, if you want to make something solid, look at this sort of zigzag motion I'm doing. So I'm doing a zigzag motion perpendicular to the line of the original thing I've laid. Yeah. So if you can imagine the structure of this, if you if you alternate each layer, so you do perpendicular to the previous one, it's a bit like a sort of composite. You're making it very st strong in uh, both planes. So it won't really be uh, very bendy. It should stay quite rigid once you're done. And it's quite satisfying. I have to say, I'm, I'm enjoying this white. The white filament definitely seems to be a reasonably pigment uh, pigment free one now one of the ones if you use the darker colors like blue black some of those have loads of pigment in it and they really react strangely when you're using them so if you've got any comments on that I'm just I'm just making my observations but if you've got any comments or you know why why pigments react weird um, then let me know my my guess would be the pigments are reacting strangely because they're kind of like a filler material so they don't react to heat and anything like that in the same way as the actual glue, the PLA or the ABS. So they're affecting the flow of the actual melted part, the, the ABS glue, which is acting as the carrier for that colour. But what do I know? What do I know? Could this be a Christmas tree decoration, perhaps? It does look kind of like a snowflake. Rattling through it now. So my kids also like Power Rangers, so I'm, I'm trying to think what, what does a Power Ranger have that I could make? I could probably make like a sort of Zord or something, a very crude one. Oh, look at that. This is going to be well rigid. It's even got a kind of web looking texture because everything you 3D draw has that organic texture look to it. You can't help that. You're not a machine. I recently described these pens to somebody as, as having a MIG welder on your that you can use on your desk and I think it's still a pretty apt description. If you've done any welding, especially MIG or TIG welding, I think you'll appreciate the similarity but it really is like a MIG welder because the material's fed to it. I think we're almost there, we're almost there. So if I want to then now make a bunch of these I think I'll just follow the same uh, outline, but frankly, I think one is probably enough for now. I mean, till they lose it. So it should just give that a few moments to harden. Uh, just another talk on weird filaments. Yellow. I found yellow is really bad, or at least this make of yellow. Very odd. So all these things are really a pain when you're setting up 3D printers, real 3D printers, because you can control a lot of the variables with the pen as you're going along, but a 3D printer just has no idea on the materials you've given it. So. So that's why sometimes you'll get a really good print and then the next time you use it, it'll be really kind of horrible and you've not changed anything and you're like, what's going on? And it's just something to do with your filaments. Well, wow, that is pretty darn good. I think it's not only good, it's sharp. It's like deadly sharp on the corners. So I'm going to just take the tiny bit of care and just trim off that deadly sharpness. It's okay to be a bit sharp, you know, I don't mind them... Uh, kind of hurting each other slightly by chucking it at each other. That's the only way they learn. Um, but yeah, you don't want it deadly sharp. If you really wanted to make sure that these will be, you know, not harm anyone when in operation, you could take a hot air type blower or even maybe a lighter or something and then just run it along the edges and it will make those into little soft blobs. But yeah, that's pretty Spider-Man like, I think. So yeah, web slingers out there. Make your own Spider-Man webs. And I'm going to go and find my own little Spider-Man and uh, see if it's what he was looking for. Hi, Spider-Man. Hi. What is it that every Spider-Man needs? Webs. A web? Yeah. 
What do you think this is? A bag. Is that what you wanted? Yeah. Can you show us how Spider-Man makes a web go over there? Ready, steady. Wow, that's some good web action. <laughs> See you later as web slingers. Comments down below, like, share, subscribe, and as ever, thanks for watching.